CES 2018 coverage brought to you by Aleph Objects, makers of Lulzbot 3D printers. Lulzbot, make everything. Hey, it's Joel at CES 2018. I'm here with... Harris Kenny. Harris, what's your position here at Aleph Objects and Lulzbot? I'm the president of the company. Wow, I'm talking to the president. So tell me, what are you doing here at CES 2018 with this booth? This is crazy what's going on. So the story of the booth is make everything. And what we're showing is that you can make everything with 3D printers, but one of the coolest things we make is our own printers. So we've got a cluster of machines printing more parts, um, which is replicating what we have at our facility in Colorado. And then we also have our production team here making machines in the booth. So my name's Mike Rosenagen. I'm an engineering technician with ALF Objects. And right now, this printer right here is doing a burn-in. Now what the burn-in process does is it breaks in all the bushings, all the bearings, and makes sure that all the axes are moving properly. Uh, it's going to heat up the bed, it's going to heat up the hot end, all the fans are going to turn on, and it's really just a good mechanical check for the printer before we do an actual print on it. This is just a really good check for us to do. Uh, we can see if something's going to be too tight in an axis. Um, we can see if the Zs aren't going to be moving up at the same speed, if they start to slowly get out of sync. And um, it only takes about 15 minutes, and it's just a really good way for us to um, tell just if we did everything else right beforehand. They're doing a fantastic job. They're going quick, too. I see these things popping up. What was the inspiration behind this actually showing off the makings of a machine? So we're an open source hardware company, and we have public tours every week in our building. And we always get really positive responses. People just love seeing the process because the technology is new and just seeing how the printers are made. So we just thought about bringing that whole experience of the factory to the show. And I think to CES, it's a broader audience. And so the, a lot of people don't realize that kind of what printers really can make, what they can do. It's their tools that can make products develop and engineers and education. There's lots of applications uh, beyond just fun things to print for your desk. Sure, I mean, there's, there's, there's a whole world of practical printing that isn't Pokemon out there. So with this booth here, you're building these special edition Lulzbot Minis, uh, which have seen some upgrades. Can you talk a little bit about those? Yeah, the printers are going to be included with some brand new products that we just released. We've got new tool heads, so an Aero Struder tool head. We worked with E3D, uh, which has their, uh, their Aero hot end. We've got the modular bed system, so it's basically easier to, for super users that want to maybe switch out or, or try different print surfaces. Um, and then we've also got a LCD for tetherless printing with the Mini. Ooh, okay, I'm, I'm kind of excited about that one. Yeah, we're really excited about that. And then we're also showing the new Cura Lulzbot Edition and the new version three dual extruder for the Taz. And, uh, and then we got more stuff cooking for sure uh, for 2018. Um, r and is always busy. Oh, we, looks like the power just cycled for this entire building. <laughs> oh no! Oh. That's actually really, I've never seen that before. That's cool. Hey, you know what? I guess we just got a power fluctuation to see us on camera. <laughs> Interesting. All right. I, uh, I have a Taz 6. I reviewed it highly on the channel, and I love the Mini as well. I'm going to have to get one of those LCDs from you. Um, I, I did want to talk a little bit about the market because we, we're seeing a lot of low-cost Far East machines coming in, and they're performing really well. We're also seeing Joseph Prusa creating some, some fantastic things with his Mark III. Can you talk a little bit about how you as a company can compete with those machines and, and, and those price points? Yeah, well the first thing is kind of what do we do? What's our value for customers? And so we focus on reliability and repeatability and performance. Um, so for example, we spend more on our electronics, our power supply, and even on foam than the retail price of some whole printers. <laughs> on foam? Foam's actually really expensive to get really quality foam that can not only ship to a customer, but also ship back if they need to help with tech support for some reason. Um, so we really pick what we want to prioritize. And so in professional environments, that reliability really matters. Part of what we're showing here is that we print our own parts. We have over 2 million parts that we've printed for our own machines as a company. And machines will commonly get 10,000 hours of runtime in our cluster. So that's, that's what we're really focusing on. But I think bigger picture with new machines entering the market, it's a good thing. Uh, for Prusha, as an open hardware company, we love to see him <laughs> succeed, right? He's sharing, we're sharing, like we both use Ultra Machine boards. So that's a good thing. And, uh, and we're a big fan of him and his company. And then for the, the lower, you know, couple hundred dollar machines, it's growing the market. And so people are getting experience and exposure because maybe their library or school doesn't have a Lulzbot, but they, they want to get access to 3D printing. So I think it's a good thing. And I think it's exciting that more people are 3D printing. 
Oh, so the low cost machine lowering the barrier to entry means that perhaps their second printer is a Lulzbot printer. Exactly, and so like we offer, for example, 24-7 tech support, and we now offer actually a repair service, so customers that have machines that are three or four years old, and they maybe want to update the tool head, we can actually work with them and offer that service for them. Um, so the idea is that our machines are kind of around for the long run, but maybe it's not the first printer, and that's okay. It's, it doesn't have to be the first printer that anybody uses. I, I've heard of open source, and uh, you say, uh, is it Libra Innovation, right? So can you talk a little bit about what it means as a company to be open source and what this Libra Innovation means? Well, it has a few layers. The, the, the biggest part is uh, the customer focus on user freedom. So the idea is when you buy a Lulzbot, you can see how the firmware works. We use Marlin firmware, for example, and you can see the full bill of materials. You can see the, how the whole machine works. And so like for users like NASA, um, where they're literally rocket scientists, <laughs> the printer is actually really easy for them to work with. And so they hack it and they do all sorts of crazy things. And so Open helps them in that way. But it also we run as a company on Open Tools. And so that means that anybody can contribute feedback. Our bug ticketing and feature requests is open. Um, anywhere in, anyone in the company, like uh, salespeople, test products before they're released, and anybody can have feedback for R&D. So there's licensing of open source hardware, but there's also like a culture of openness where anybody can contribute and users can tr drive feedback. And so there's, there's a few levels of why we think it's good business. That's great, uh, and, and thank you for that explanation. Now I know a little bit more. Harris, I want to thank you so much. Yep. Appreciate uh, bringing, bringing me down here. This is a fantastic show. Uh, good luck with the rest of CES. Thanks, appreciate it.